Probably the best decision Kevin Cronin ever made was passing up going to college and then going on to join REO Speedwagon at age 20 as the lead vocalist. Although it didn't last long, and in the middle of recording his second album with the group in 1973, he left over creative differences. Was this just an omen of something to come 16 years later? There's way more speculation out there than facts directly from Kevin of why he left or was told to leave in 73. Same with what I consider the fall of REO Speedwagon, starting with drummer Alan Gratzer leaving in 1988, and then Kevin supposedly leaving in 1989, then coming right back to the band, and Gary Retrath then leaving to form his own band. I did some web crawling and came up with a few discussion threads from years gone by on dead but not buried forums that might shed a little light on this. Kevin's been writing his autobiography for quite a few years now, and it is supposed to come out sometime in 2022, with some new information leaks already surfacing. So let's get on with it and talk about what we can for now. As we kick back and take a look back on the lead vocalist of REO Speedwagon, Kevin Cronin. <laughs> Kevin Patrick Cronin was born on October 6, 1951, in Evanston, Illinois. His musical career really started at the same time many other rock stars of the 70s started, February 9, 1964. That was the date of the first Beatles appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. Kevin was 12 years old at the time. He took guitar lessons once a week from a shop called Rossi Music in Oak Lawn, Illinois, his parents renting him a guitar for 50 cents a week. He attended St. Linus Catholic Elementary School and then on to and graduate from Chicago's Brother Rice High School. I think Kevin had some rough times in school from what I gathered in a few interviews. Here is something he was quoted saying after talking about the Beatles performance on the Ed Sullivan show. Man, it was literally overnight. The girls didn't want to know those jocks anymore. It was, who's the sensitive guy with the guitar? I'd been taking lessons for a little over a year at that point and I didn't know why. I was just playing stupid little things like on top of old Smokey or whatever and I was ridiculed by the guys who thought they were badasses. That weekend, the Beatles came on. Suddenly, all those guys started following me because I was the only one in the neighborhood who knew how to play the guitar. And the girls suddenly weren't so enamored by the tough, greaser-type guys. Kevin Cronin returned to his alma mater, Brother Rice High School, where he had the opportunity to explore the campus after 50 years and speak to the current students. On the experience, Kevin wrote, It was nice to feel closure on some of the more challenging times I had in high school. I found the fonder memories of my times at Rice were the ones which rose to the top as I walked the halls, peeked into some of the classrooms, and felt the progress the school has made, especially in the areas of communication and the arts. I have a feeling because of his interest in music instead of sports in school, Kevin might have been carrying some extra weight around all them years. Kevin went on to play in a few bands, but from all accounts, he seemed to spend more time playing solo gigs for supper clubs and things like that. Then he started doing the musician's referral deal, and that is how he met Gary Richrath. Let me say this here about that meeting. Nobody knows exactly what went on for sure, but Kevin said he did play the song Music Man for Gary, so we can pretty much be sure Gary heard something he liked in Kevin's voice and that song, because Kevin ended up being asked to join REO for that great second album titled REO 2, and it had the song Music Man on it. It sure was a strange musical background with Kevin being the solo type singer, composer, doing supper clubs, 
and Gary the hard rock and guitarist. But whatever happened, there was chemistry. Then we come to the third album, Riding the Storm Out, and Kevin up and quits during the recording of it, saying it was creative differences. And as I said in the opening, was this an omen? I think so. I have a feeling Gary and Kevin were both very headstrong, and at that time, Kevin did not have a good foothold in the band and just left or possibly was told to leave. They finished the album with Michael Murphy doing the lead vocals, as most know, and he did a few more albums after that. And I'll say it, Michael Murphy was no Kevin Cronin when it came to singing in that band. There's a live version of him singing Riding the Storm Out from 1974, I believe on Rock Concert. It's on YouTube. And the song kind of lays there. That is until it comes to the first guitar solo and Gary steps up and basically blows Murphy out of the way. Kevin Cronin had what it took to sing them songs and pick it up after Gary's monster solos. Murphy couldn't do that. So after a few years, I think the band realized that and when the opportunity to get Kevin back came, they did it. That was January of 1976 and Kevin found out life out there by yourself was tough, as would Gary when he left 14 years later. I did a video on Gary a few months back, so if you want to check it out, I'll put a link up here right now to get you there. It will also be in the description below. After Kevin's return, Ario took off, with Kevin and Gary writing and the band recording some great music. Kevin's voice was really sounding fine and it fit right in there with Gary's guitar. Like I said in the Gary video I did earlier, I saw them at Super Jam in St. Louis in 1977 and Kevin's voice was top notch that day. You can hear him on the live album, you get what you play for? He was really coming into his own as a rock singer. I know this is a video about Kevin, but it's hard to talk about Kevin and not mention Gary. I did the same thing in my video about Gary. These two guys had a real chemistry when writing and performing together. How Kevin turned himself from a solo club act to a rock and roll singer is pretty amazing. And Kevin said, Gary taught me how to be a rock and roller, and I 100% believe that. Kevin's voice and Gary's guitar was a sound of its own. When Kevin moved to the West Coast from Champaign, Illinois, after he rejoined the band, that was when he wrote Roll With The Changes. This is what he had to say about that. I actually wrote that song as I was traveling from Chicago to Los Angeles when I rejoined the band. I left the band for a couple years. When I rejoined, the band had moved from Chicago, Illinois to Los Angeles. I didn't really picture myself as a Los Angeles person. I'm a Midwest boy. So when I came to Los Angeles, I really wanted to feel the journey. I didn't just want to jump on an airplane. It was too big of a move for me. So I wanted to drive. Roll with the changes was personally about me moving from Chicago to Los Angeles. I was quite literally rolling with the changes. I had just stopped at a truck stop in New Mexico. I had a brown paper bag that was sitting on the seat next to me when the thoughts of the lyrics started coming to me. I was writing the words on this brown paper bag as I was rolling down the road. So I was quite literally and figuratively rolling with the changes. Kevin wrote their first number one song, Keep On Loving You. He said he woke up in the middle of the night with a few simple chords running through his head. He went into his little Wurlitzer piano and started playing through the chords and Keep On Loving You was the song that came out. Then a few years later, he wrote their second number one, Can't Fight This Feeling. A song Kevin wrote about a girl he had a love at first sight experience with after seeing her, but who was going with one of his friends. And after they broke up, it took him forever to get the courage up to tell her his feelings. 
another power ballad that went up the charts and stayed there at number one for three consecutive weeks. Can't Fight This Feeling was not the first single from the Wheels Are Turning album. That honor went to an up-tempo track called I Do Wanna Know, which only reached number 29 in the U.S. So it seemed the power ballads were charting higher than Ario's up-tempo rockers. Things were starting to change. With Gary and Kevin producing and the hits coming out, the music was starting to change and tension was setting in. Life As We Know It is the 12th studio album by Ario Speedwagon, released in 1987. It featured That Ain't Love and In My Dreams, both of which were top 20 hits, while Variety Tonight reached number 60 on the Hot 100. One Too Many Girlfriends, showcase the growing tension between Kevin and Gary. At one point, New Way to Love was considered for use in the film Top Gun. This is the group's final studio release with Gary and the original drummer Alan Gratzer, as well as their final Top 40 album to date. It went to number 28. By then it seemed the magic between Kevin and Gary had left. I remember myself losing interest in the band right around that time. I guess all good things have to come to an end, and when Kevin and Gary split, it was never the same again. Kevin went on to keep the band running, and Gary starred his own group, Rich Wrath. And in my opinion, both pretty much failed. Although I did like that one album Rich Wrath released, Only the Strong Survive. Kevin and the band went on to release four more albums over the next 20 years, none of which I cared for. And from the sales of them, it looks like I wasn't the only one. Kevin tours around using the group's name, but to me, and this is just my opinion, but it is an Ario Speedwagon. The magic of that band left years ago. There's a lot to talk about in the split between Kevin and Gary, but not in this video. Maybe I'll do another one someday after I hear what Kevin has to say in his book, and that should come out sometime this year. He's been keeping himself a low profile for years. Hopefully this book will shed some light on him. I guess I turned this into more of a podcast than a mini documentary, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Comment section is open. Please feel free to jump in and speak your mind about this video. Whether you agree or disagree with me, I welcome you all. And as always, if you see fit, Subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up too. Thank you all for watching. 